Hey guys, so in today's video, I'll be talking about energy transformations. So I'll be covering enthalpy, standard enthalpy change, calorimetry, and some enthalpy change calculations. So in a chemical reaction, energy is required to break the bonds in the reactants. And energy is given out when new bonds are formed in the products. So when the bonds in the products are stronger than the bonds in the reactants, then this reaction is said to be exothermic as heat is given out to the surroundings. Whereas in endothermic reactions, heat is absorbed from the surroundings because the bonds in the reactants are stronger than the bonds in the products. The internal energy stored in the reactants is known as its enthalpy. This is denoted by the letter H. The absolute value of the enthalpy of the reactants cannot be known, nor can the enthalpy of the products. But what can be measured is the difference between them. And that is the change in enthalpy. This is denoted by delta H. By convention, delta H has a negative value for exothermic reactions and a positive value for endothermic reactions. So standard enthalpy changes are normally measured under standard conditions of 100 kilopascals pressure. And a temperature of 298 Kelvin. This is denoted by the symbol delta H and a small circle with a dash. So let's move on to calorimetry. On the right is a simple calorie meter with the reaction mixture inside a polystyrene cup with a lid on top to reduce heat loss and a thermometer to measure heat change. So the enthalpy of a reaction can be measured experimentally by using a calorie meter. A calorie meter is a device used to measure the amount of heat evolved in a chemical or a physical process. So in a simple calorie meter, all the heat evolved in an exothermic reaction is used to raise the temperature of a known mass of water. For endothermic reactions, the heat transferred from the water to the reaction can be calculated by measuring the lowering of the temperature of a known mass of water. So basically, calorimetry is a process of measuring the amount of heat released or absorbed during a chemical reaction. By knowing the change in heat, it can be determined whether or not a reaction is exothermic or endothermic. So if there's a release in heat and the temperature increases, then the reaction is exothermic. And if there's an absorption of heat and the temperature decreases, then the reaction is endothermic. Okay, so how do you calculate enthalpy changes? So the heat involved in changing the temperature of any substance can be calculated from this equation. Q which is the heat energy equals mass, which is M into specific heat capacity C into delta T, which is the change in temperature. The specific heat capacity of water is 4.18 kilojoules per kg per Kelvin, which means that it requires 4.18 kilojoules of energy to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water by one Kelvin. Enthalpy changes are normally quoted in kilojoules per mole. For either a reactant or a product, so it's necessary to work out the number of moles involved in the reaction which produces the heat change in the water. Okay, so let's take some examples. 50 centimeter cube of 1 mole per decimeter cube hydrochloric acid solution was added to 50 centimeter cube of 1 mole per decimeter cube sodium hydroxide solution in a polystyrene beaker. 
the initial temperature of both solutions was 16.7 degrees Celsius. After stirring and accounting for heat loss, the highest temperature recorded was 23.5 degrees Celsius. Calculate the enthalpy change for this reaction. So the first thing you do is write an equation for the whole reaction. So since you're dealing with hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, you write the equation for that. So it would be HCl, aqueous solution, plus NaOH, aqueous, which gives NaCl, aqueous, plus H2O. Second step is to find uh, the molar quantities of both HCl and NaOH. So first you have to convert 50 centimeter cube to decimeter cube by dividing by 1000 and multiply by 1, which gives 5 into 10 to the power negative 2 moles. Same thing for NaOH. 50 divided by 1000 into 1 equals 5 into 10 to the power negative 2 moles. I use the formula number of moles equals concentration into volume. So the total volume for this solution would be 50 plus 50 is 100. Now you have to assume that the solution has the same density and specific heat capacity as water. So then the mass of water would be 100 grams or 0.1 kg. The temperature change would be 23.5 minus 16.7, which equals 6.8 degrees Celsius or 6.8 Kelvin. So the heat evolved in this reaction would be calculated by using the formula Q equals MC delta T. So your mass is 0.1 kg into C which is 4.18 for water into the change in temperature which is 6.8 Kelvin which gives you the value 2.84 kilojoules. So the change in heat of this reaction would be 2.84 divided by the number of moles, which is 5.00 into 10 to the power negative 2 moles, which gives the value 56.8 kilojoules per mole. But if you look at the temperature change, it has increased from 16.7 to 23.5 degrees Celsius. So this means that the temperature has increased, which means it's an exothermic reaction. And if it's an exothermic reaction, which it means that the change in heat will be a negative value. So you add a negative sign in front of this. This is your final answer. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching.